Stephanie. This is String Time with Stephanie. I can't wait to get started today. I teach at Tops K-8, which is um, in East Lake, and I teach fourth through eighth grade orchestra. I really miss teaching my orchestra kids at school every day um, because technology is sometimes my friend and sometimes not, which I'm sure that's you too. Like today, um, a student needed... What is some print out something or needed oh needed me to write or um write something for them so i was going to do that but i couldn't print it out from my phone and then i couldn't get it on my school computer so then i just have to retype the whole thing which is fine and i'm happy to do that but i'm sure that you have similar similar issues at your wherever you are and it is just a learning curve for us all so thanks for being patient and the one thing that makes it better is playing music for me. So I'm excited to do that with you today. So today's week focus is going to be on finger pattern, finger pattern number one and finger pattern number two. Some of that might be review for you um, or new. And either way, we can always learn and practice even though we are not... Um, Maybe it's not something like, like, oh, super new, but it's really cool because if somebody says it in this one way or like whenever I go to a new teacher, they can say something. I'm like, it's like I've never heard it before, but of course I have heard that many times, but they just have said it in a way that makes a lot of sense. So I hope that's what's happening here for you today. We've, before we get started, I have a joke for you. Are you ready? What do we call a pod of musical whales? An orchestra. <laughs> So funny, right? Anyway, we are going to need to get out our instrument now, and we're going to need to get out a piece of paper and a pencil if you want to write some notes down. Um, if you have a packet or your essential elements book, you might want to get that out too. Um, but mostly you just need your instrument, and go ahead and get it out now. All right, now that we have our instrument, we're gonna get started. Finger pattern number one is the first pattern that we're gonna be talking about, and it's actually the first one that you've probably learned. And that's when we have our second and our third finger really close. That's finger pattern number one, totally normal. That's what we've always been doing. Finger pattern number two is when we have our first finger and then our second finger that joins it really close by, okay? They make a different sound on the instrument, and that's really clear. I'll play it for you now. All right, so this is finger pattern number one. This is what it sounds like. It's D, E, F sharp. Big space between the first and second finger. Okay, this is finger pattern number two. I'm gonna go back and forth. So when I'm doing that, I'm just moving my second finger back and forth. It's like, I call this the butterfly finger. It's probably gonna be like what you do when you go back to school. It's like, who do I wanna play with in recess? Oh, everybody! I wanna play with this friend, and I wanna play with this friend, and I wanna play with this friend. That's exactly like our fingers. So this is finger pattern number one, and then our second finger goes to finger pattern number two. And our first and our third, they stay the same. So if you have tapes on your instrument, First finger stays on the first finger tape. Third finger stays on the third finger tape. It's just our second finger that's moving back and forth between the two. So if we have it here, we have like three, two, low two, or finger pattern number two, one. So that is what we are gonna talk about today. All right, now it's time to work out those muscles. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. We are not going to do that. It's going to work out. We're going to work out our finger muscles to play our string instrument. So put out your finger in hand, and we're going to move back and forth between our second and third finger. We're going to open, in and out, and in and out, and in and out, in, 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 out. Yeah, you're going back and forth. Good. Now let's go between our second, our first and second finger. In. In, out, in, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Which one was easier for you? My first and second were definitely easier for me. 
I cannot do my pinky. Well, kind of. Um, those are some exercises that I think you should be doing as warm-ups. When you do your scale every day when you practice, that's something that you should definitely also take into consideration. It's just warming up those fingers, getting them all strengthened, getting them ready to play. All right, now we're ready to start playing with our bow on the string. So go ahead and put your instrument up. Oh, you know what we need to talk about? We need to talk about pop, which means perfect orchestra posture, pop, P-O-P. -P. Now, I know that you think you know this already, and I'm sure you do, but that little button on our violin that's, or viola that's holding up the tailpiece, that's gonna go right into our neck. Our chin or our jaw is gonna go into our chin rest, or sometimes I call it the jaw rest, because it's not our chin, okay? This is not what we're gonna do here. We're putting our chin up. That looks so weird. Doesn't that look weird to you? So, out to the side of your neck, little button right there in our artery, like a little vampire sucking your blood, so gross. Then our jaw on the jaw rest, and our violin or our viola is parallel to the ground, so pop. And it really has to do with our shoulders. If you are like this, your instrument could still be in the correct position. It's just you have these like really hunchy shoulders. So straighten up your spine like you're being pulled up. Yeah, just like you're being pulled up like a puppet, a marionette from a string, like Pinocchio. And then we're gonna make sure our wrist is straight. Imagine there's a little frog living there. We're not gonna squish him. We're gonna give him lots of room to hop around. Our fingers, we're gonna play on our fingertips. That's part of perfect orchestra posture or pop. And then we're gonna check, check our elbow. We're not gonna be here like this. That's, it's stemming from our shoulders or our spine. That touching there. So nice tall shoulders, nice tall spine. And then we have pop, perfect orchestra posture. So here we go, bow on the string, or if you want a pizzicato, that's fine too. We're gonna echo in finger pattern number one. My turn first, starting on D. D, 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 E, yeah, right away, my turn. D, D, E, E, good, now starting on E. Yeah, big space, finger pattern number one. My turn, starting on F sharp now. Go oh, pop! Very good. Now my turn, now we're gonna try something harder. We're gonna do all four. Good, again. Pattern number two, moving our second finger down. D, D, E, E. That's the same, right? Same finger tape. Now E and F natural, low two, finger pattern two. Good. Now F natural and G. Good, even though you're keeping up with pop, one of the things that can happen is when we go F natural, F natural, G, G. Did you see my finger? It snuck up there. And when we're in finger pattern number two, your goal, and what I want you to practice this week, is some of these echo patterns on your own, but keeping that second finger in low two or finger pattern number two position when you do it. So let's try it one more time. D. E, F natural, G, keep it down. Good, again. D, E, F natural, G. You got it. All right, we've done our finger workout. We've done our echoing. We've practiced finger pattern number one and finger pattern number two. Now it's time to add it to a song. The first song we're gonna do, you're probably familiar with. It's in the book on page eight. It's called Rolling Along, but really it's called Mary Has a Little Lamb. So we're gonna try it now. You can follow along on the screen, or you can follow along in your packet that you've picked up, or you can follow along in your book, whatever you wanna do. But remember that we're gonna be using finger pattern number one, or F sharps, high second finger. Here we go, starting on F sharp. One, two, one, Two, ready, 
go. Nice job. Yeah, that's it. So I'm, we're not going to take too much more time to practice that right now because you can do that on your own, but don't forget to use pop. If we have done Mary has a little lamb, now we're going to turn it into Mary lost her little lamb. Poor Mary. Which means we're going to start using finger pattern number two to play this song. So when we play an F sharp, now we're actually playing F natural, and it's going to be a low second finger right next to our first, just like we practiced in our echoing. So get your hands set up. Oh, and pop. All right. Let's follow along on our screen or follow along in your book. But remember, all those F sharps are now low second, low twos or F naturals. Here we go, starting with a low two in finger pattern number two. One, two, one, two. F natural, go. Now E. Right next door. that right now and remember to pop perfect orchestra posture on your fingertips and always our first and second finger are going to be together. Great job. That was so fun working with you today. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun. I hope you revered how to hold your instrument and did all those things. I know that sometimes when you hear it from somebody else, it helps, or sometimes you're like, oh, I know that. That's great. And then you can feel so proud of yourself for all the things that you've done. Like, I'm so proud of you. You know what you could do is you could try to play Baby Shark with both finger pattern number one and finger pattern number two, like D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 F sharp, or F sharp, finger pattern number one, or D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 D, E, G, 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 F natural, and you could turn it into minor. And that's what we're doing when we use finger pattern number one or finger pattern number two, in this case on the violin, viola, or cello. So awesome job. I know your teachers really miss you, and maybe you should take a picture of yourself practicing and send it to them. I'm sure they would love that. All right, have a great week. I'll see you next time. you a little bit about finger pattern num number one and finger pattern number two. So we have finger pattern number one, which is right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Which way is it? It's hard for me to look at the camera and do that.